Good evening and welcome to the shop. Tonight, we're gonna talk about card scrapers. So I'm gonna try to break down how to tune and use these guys for your woodworking pleasure. Recently, when I was doing the, uh, the chest of drawers course, I used this, this different kind of card scraper called, a, well, a French curve. Some people call it a gooseneck. And someone said, how do you sharpen that thing? And I've had a number of questions about that. So I'm gonna get into that today. I'm gonna to start off by breaking down the good old everyday card scraper, also known as a cabinet scraper. And then lastly, we're gonna fly through this. Sometimes you guys say, I make things look easy. <laughs> Tonight I'm gonna to make something look not so easy. <laughs> I, I haven't used this a lot. I've seen them used to great effect. And I actually struggled a few different times to sharpen them correctly, but I got it figured out. And I'm gonna explain that. And we're gonna have some fun with this scraper. I'm an old school guy, and I still like the handheld card scraper. This is so versatile. You can just use it in any direction. The beauty of a card scraper is that it takes a shaving, but it's not shearing the wood like a plane does. So it can go in any direction. It doesn't have some of the, the problems that uh, a hand plane does where it's very unlikely that it ever tears out the grain. There's certain things you want to use it in a certain way to best effect, but it's a wonderful tool. And as I said in the description, pound for pound, it is the most valuable, effective, time-saving tool in your cabinet. See how I'm pointing my card scraping finger at you. I have done another video on this specific thing. We just talked about tuning and using a card scraper. You can go back to that one if you really want to see um, an exhaustive look. Because I do want to include the French curve and the good old number 80. All right, so here we go. A card scraper is, you buy them in different sizes. They come in different thicknesses. I put a link to one that's the standard thickness. Now, uh, Sandvik or what's it called, Bajo, there's a fish on it. Those are very common, I've gotten those for years. Um, the guys at Lee Valley uh, gave me a card scraper, I think it's this one. It was a really fine quality. But the great thing is, they're all fairly inexpensive. They're only about 10 bucks a piece. So, the card scraper is the, just a piece of steel. It's got a certain level of hardness or softness, whatever you want to say about it, and just enough so that you can actually push the steel over this corner to create a little hook down that whole edge, okay? Now, before you do that, you've got to prepare the edge. So the edge has to be honed to 90 degrees. We're gonna hone it nice and square and then push over the edge. So here's the, the beauty of it you're actually gonna get four cutting edges every time you sharpen it. So you've got a nice honed surface, and then we're gonna push a burr over on that corner. So we'll have a hook of metal, the burr, there, and then another one, we'll push it down this edge, so it'll be hooked to here, and then we're gonna do it on both other sides. So you're gonna create four good cutting surfaces. Now a lot of times people say, well, how long do those edges last? It depends kind of how hard you're using them. It's just a very light kind of almost wire-like hook. So they don't last a ton of time, but plenty long to do a lot of work with it and then to quickly sharpen. Now you can see back in here, I keep kind of like a, a holster full of um, card scrapers. I did at one time have the, all of these slots filled and I would use them for classes and just give everybody one to use. but. They've gotten kind of distributed and lost and whatever over the years. The, here's one that I've had for a while. It actually started out, this is actually narrower than when you get them, but it's been sharpened so many times, it's now just the little brother of this one. <laughs> uh, in order to create that edge, once you've used it a little bit, you're gonna take it to a file. Now, if it's brand new, you don't have to take it to the file right off, but you'll start with the next step, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. So to use the file, you wanna get it into your vise. And this is just gonna quickly 
flatten and remove some nice metal. And I'm going to just hold the file at a diagonal and just try to give it nice, even, full strokes so I maintain flatness of the edge. Don't want to dish it out. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm having the light is reflecting on the edge and I'm seeing it get wider and wider with the passes because it's changing from rounded to flat. So the light is getting reflected wider. Now I can feel just a very thin hair of an edge there and that's good. That's about where you want to stop. And then I'll come back on the other side. Same thing. Now when I do this, I usually do two or three at a time. So I get in a groove and then I'll have everything sharp in my little holder and I'm good to go. All right, so here is the next step. So this is this is kind of how they look when you get them new. They will look sharp, but they're not sharp. They don't have the burr on them. And it's probably a good idea to do this next step, which is honing on a plate. Now, this is where having a diamond plate is hugely valuable. I used to sharpen them on regular water stones, but water stones are fairly soft and they will kind of um, dish out and you can get a groove in them and not, not so useful. So uh, you want to keep your water stones flat, but the diamond stone is dead flat and it's hard. So it doesn't go out of shape. It's nice for this. All right. So I'm going to start with the red side. This is a, I actually put a link to this. This is the duo sharp plate. It's the four by 10. We put a link. Now these diamond stones aren't cheap, but they do last a real long time. You never have to flatten them, but it's nice to have at least one diamond stone in your shop. So I'm going to set this on edge and now to keep it vertical, I'm actually going to bend it so that it sits at about a 90 degree angle to the plate. So there we go. Sitting there nice. And here we go. Moving right around. Now this red dot, this is the more coarse side of this two-sided diamond plate. The red dot, it's hard to know exactly what it means because <laughs> I don't know the uh, <laughs> translation. The red is 600 mesh and the green side is 1200, so finer. The red is also 25 micron and the green is nine micron, so quite fine. So we're gonna start with the red. And what's nice is this is all you need is the red and green on these stones. So I'm gonna keep getting them flat like this. So go around the plate and I'm gonna lay it flat and get that little hair of a burr off that edge. Same thing on the other edge. Brian's asking about lubricant. Is that necessary? Uh, not on a diamond stone like this, Brian. That's kind of the nice thing about these diamond plates. They don't need it. Not for something like this. Now I'm going to... You could put water on there if you wanted, but I never do. To push the burr over, we will use some mineral oil. So that'll be coming up in a second here. All right, so there we go. We've got that nice edge flat. So now I'm going to just go one more time flat like this. Now you could push the burr over right now, but let's go just a, a touch finer and it'll give a little better quality of a burr. So we'll get on this side. Ken says 25 micron equals 730 grit. Okay, all right, so almost 800 grit. How about the nine micron? <clears throat> I'm always more. satisfied. Always one more. <laughs> hey, by the way, last week was Sarah's birthday. Happy birthday, Sarah. That's right, Sarah. <laughs> we met your dad, he was here, and we heard all about you watching with your dad so that makes us happy and we're we just want to say hi and hope you're enjoying your shirt and your mug <laughs> it's That's great right. to see your smiling face right. all right so i'm just gonna hit 
both sides now. I'm on the green again. This is the fine. Okay, I have more numbers here. Eight micron, 2400 grit. Okay, good. Nine micron, 2150 grit. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. So with this now, we're at like, you know, over 2000 grit, what we'd normally think of. And that's good. I can see a nice polished edge. Looks great. Now we're going to prep the edge to push over the burr. I've got a little mineral oil on there. Giving us numbers and <laughs> insights. They're awesome. All right, so here we are. Now I'm going to lay it down. I've got a little mineral oil on there. I'm just going to take the burnisher, which is hardened, polished steel, significantly harder than the metal here. So it will anneal this metal. Someone tell me I'm using that word correctly. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to just use it and sound like I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to just hold it here and then go back and forth, keeping the burnisher flat, but bearing down all the way out to the edge. You don't want to pull it over like that. I am uh, using good force now. Usually I'll do this down on the table. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to draw out the edge or consolidate the edge, whatever that means. It's something has to do with compressing and it, it helps you to turn a better burr. If you don't do this step, you don't get quite as nice. You can do it fast like that and your friends will be very impressed. When there's music on, I try to do it to the beat. Some kind of jig. <laughs> no, I only do the jig when I'm doing jigs. Okay, so now we've got that done. Now there's a couple different ways, or numerous ways you can push the burr, but I'm just gonna show you two tonight. We're gonna, you could just push this corner right into something fixed like this. What I'm gonna do, if you can see in the camera, I'm about 90 degrees here. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna lift my hand and just slightly, and then I'll lift it a little bit more, and I'm gonna push it over to about 10 degrees. Okay, it's important not to overshoot this because if you push the burr too hooked low, then using the card scraper is difficult because it won't work. It's too rounded. So you're just going to go about 10 degrees and get that hook on there. So I could do this just very gently into a corner like this, just by pushing. Now I'm going to lift my hand a little and again. And I can feel a little hook on there. I like this other method that I learned from Frank Klaus, the Hungarian woodworker, really fine woodworker. Like 30 years ago, I watched a video and he showed me, he said, now I show you how do I do it. <laughs> so we're going to push this up here like this. I'm going to show you how do I do it. How hard are you pushing? Ken's asking. Oh, on that other one, that's, that's the civilized way when you're here. I was, I was bearing down, but not, not a ton. You don't need a tremendous amount of force. If you've really prepared that edge and you consolidated the edge, you're going to get, it's, it's a little lighter hook than I just pushed over here. I can feel this one a little stronger, but I'll show you. They both, they both cut nicely. So I'm going to come up here, but I call it, you can call it drawing out the edge. Whatever, just don't forget that step. And I'll do three that way. I'll do three this way. I seem to put more force when I do that. Um, and in a way, that might not be the smartest thing because you end up with a stronger hook. You want kind of like just a medium because they seem to last longer. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this. Let's get up a piece of walnut and snug that up. All right, this is my civilized one, my first one. So watch. Now, you're going to, in using it, here's the thing. You're going to bend it slightly. See, you got your thumbs behind. Your other fingers, your clean fingers, are going to pull it here. Now, normally I would wash my hands before I do this with the wood because you don't want to get that staining on the wood. But I'm going to just lean it forward and then... Feel where it hooks and then push. See, that's that light civilized. And we're getting nice shavings. Now they're just different in texture. All right, so uh, we've got some 
pleaner marks there and I'm going to start working it right here. Now what's cool about this is there's two knots right here. You've got this really wild swirly grain. So if you're familiar with this, you know that it's very prone to tear out. So if you tried to plane across here, it would be challenging to not do it, to do it without tearing out. So I can actually see a little tear out from it going through the, over the joiner. I just ran it over the big wide joiner downstairs. But if I start scraping, let me, I'm going to use one of the more aggressive edges now. I can scrape in this direction. I can turn it around, scrape in this direction. See, now I'm doing the same, I'm still flexing it. And that's pretty clear. That little light tear out is pretty much gone. So this could save you a tremendous amount of time from sanding, you know, rather than going through all those grits, you can very lightly detail an edge and create these beautiful shavings, if you want, by hand. And they're wispy thin, going any direction. So that's the card scraper, that's the method. You've got to hone the edge, you draw out the edge flat with the burnisher flat on the side and then you push over the burr with your burnishing tool at about 10 degrees. Now for the French curve just ignore the fact that it's got the big curve. <laughs> Actually you're going to do this exactly the same way but you can't obviously do the whole thing in one shot but it's very similar. So I've got an edge on there. I'll get it into the vise. So I need to create a flat. I'm just going to do a very small section because you work this around in sections. So I don't have a, get that a little lower. So I'm going to get the file on there and just, this would be good if I had a metal vise, but um, the thing about this is you have to be careful you don't crush what you just did. So you're kind of rolling the file and I can see it, the same thing happening. It's getting flatter. And you could also use a diamond plate. Like we know how this one is, but I have another one, 95 micron. It's a uh, lapping plate as well. I use it to lap the water stones. It's very nice. I'm enjoying it, Dean. And uh, I just put it, I'm going to hone this edge. So I'm going to hold this at 90, actually similar to what we did, except I'm just going to roll it back. So I'm just doing the, creating the flat edge. That's nice. That cuts fast. I might just use this instead of the file altogether because I can control it. Well, when you get in here, you got to be creative with how you approach it. So I got to come this way. You're just creating that 90 degree surface again. And it takes a little more patience because you got to work this. Now, if I'm doing a smaller cove and I wanted to tune this up, I might just do that much because that's where I'm going to be, okay, with the sharpening uh, or with the using of it. But sometimes you have these larger coves and where this end is nice you know you can get it in there by angling it and find the perfect seat into the cove so I would go ahead and let me just do a little more here let's just see if we can really do it I don't want to just give you smoke and mirrors here this is how it actually goes smoke and mirrors Always sounds like I'm putting down the the illusion community. <laughs> I once wanted to be a magician myself when I was a kid. Bay. I got the whole set and everything. You know, I had the the old uh, the rice bowl thing trick. I remember doing that. As you're using them and you're flexing it with your thumb, if you're doing a large flat surface, it'll get hot and your thumbs will actually burn. And so I, you can take these 
magnets, like refrigerator magnets, cut them up, <laughs> and then set it on here. And there you go. It's, it's like a holder behind. You have your thumbs back here. They won't get hot. It also works as a nice spacer to set into your vise. If you've pushed a burr on one edge and you want to push it on the other edge, you can clamp it tightly without crushing the burr that you just made. So, of course, when you do that, you're going to have the magnet on each side like that. Now, the ultimate holder for the card scraper is what I want to show you with the number 80. That's essentially, that's exactly what it is. And it saves your thumbs. It's super easy. It creates the flex and does a beautiful job. So now I've got that honed. Now I'm going to just go a little further with it on here. Let's see if we can get that little section of end. So have you ever come to a time when a scraper was not helpful or that it didn't work? Uh, Any situations where a scraper wouldn't? I'm trying to think. I mean, I only think of them when I know they will work. Um, you know, to grab one, but they're very handy. I mean, it's just, can you get it in the right position? Is it going to really help you? Once you start using them, you'll start to realize how many, how many uh, uses there are for them. But usually they're a finer finishing tool. You know, if you hand plane something, you might have little ridges and or a little tiny tear out you can just lightly go in and detail that with a card scraper before sanding and you save yourself that time you know you've got a really nice surface all right so there i go i have got it flattened i feel no more burr and it's pretty smooth we're gonna draw that edge out so here we go we've got it flat i'm just gonna work that. Now I'm not lifting it, I'm holding it as flat as I can, but I'm bearing down, making sure that I'm kind of on that edge. Flip it over. So you're just going to work your way around. You've got to be a little patient with this. These just stay sharp a fairly long time because you don't use them a lot, you know. I put a link to three of them from Rockler. They got a three pack. So two square ones, different sizes. I think they're different thicknesses. And then the French curve. Uh, there are some French curves online that look weird. They don't have the true French curve. They're kind of flat there. I don't, I don't get it. But uh, So look for one that has a really nice curvature to it because you want the accurate thing when you're working on a true cove. I'm going to get a little mineral oil on there. And let's see if we can push a little burr here. So again, we're going to work in just kind of small increments. I'm going to put it in the vise because it's hard to do that with your hands. I'll grab it with the magnet so I can get a good bite up top of there. There we go. And you got to really just be patient. I'm lifting and I'm pushing to create that burr. And then I'll come back this way. Missing the NFL tonight. The, do you know the season starts tonight? I thought the season was starting on Sunday. No, it started tonight. <laughs> Our team starts on Sunday. Yeah. It's Tampa Bay and uh, Dallas Cowboys right now. Good thing I'm taping it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to, whoops, cut in front. Oh, oops. Sorry. Okay. Did I no, unplug? Fine. Okay. What about you? Yeah, I just hit the mic thing. So you can see, this is the hardest part of it, right here. This, But this is probably the most useful section, I find. But I can, and then you're feeling, and you know, I can feel a little hook, so that's nice. I think the one from Rockler said also that it was a harder material, so it should stay longer. I would normally go and wash right now, but I'm... I don't have time for that. All right, so here we go. I'm going to set this into the cove. All right, so see, if you rolled all the way here, I don't have a good, but as I roll up, see how it starts to conform? And then if you angle it, you can get it to it really seats in there. Now, let me hold it this way so you can see. Now I can hook it. Look it. You're getting this gorgeous 
shaving. And that, I'm telling you, this saves you a tremendous amount of time when you're, if you ran this on a, on a router table, like through the cutter, you're gonna have chatter there. But you, before sanding, just do this. This light, you can turn it the other way too and turn it down this way so you can find it wherever it works well. You just nicely pull that up. You be light about it because you don't want to crush and turn that edge. You'll get used to that. And once you've hit the whole thing, it's a very quick sand. Now, quick sanding. Um, in the uh, Shaker Chest of Drawers video, this is actually a similar piece of molding. The molding is made while it's glued to a wider flat piece. So you get one piece of cove on one side and one on the other. That makes it really nice and rigid to, to make your cove clean it up and then you rip it to width. So it's not all sanded fully before you even rip it to width. If you're in the process of doing the shaker chest drawers, you're gonna come to that section where we talk about making cove molding, cleaning it up, and you'll just see the demonstration. However, I don't go into sharpening this, so hey, we just did. So now I'm going to show you the number 80. Um, it's sharpened in a different manner. So, so far we've handled two kinds of card scrapers, which essentially had the same process. Flatten and hone the edge to a 90 degrees, and then draw out the edge, and then push over the burr. And you've got your cutting edge. Now, it takes a little practice if you're just starting out on it, uh, it may be a little frustrating, but a lot of times one of the big mistakes or early things that people do is push the burr too steeply. So when you come to cut, you're, you're like, geez, this isn't even cutting, you know, because in order for it to cut, if you push the burr too low like that, too hard over, then you're going to have to lay it really low like this till it hooks. So you just want that 10 degree, and then you can be more upright and get a beautiful cut out of it. You get these wispy fine shavings that do beautiful, prepare the surface beautifully. Now, that's, that can be hard on your thumbs, can burn your thumbs, your hands can get, you know, after sometimes when I do a lot of that, I swear there have been times I've wanted to just put my hands in buckets you know, <laughs> of ice or something at the end of the day. Um, but this is a more civilized way. And you can go out and get one of these. If you, after you see this, you might like it. Uh, but it's, it's a, um, a Stanley number 80. Their record also made them. Um, but this is an, I don't think this is a terribly old one, but there's a ton of them available online. If you go on eBay, Look for the Stanley 80. I think there might be 30 or 50 of them up there. Um, they range in price. Some of them are more um, better condition, maybe older. I don't know all the nuances that make them of greater value, but I noticed a lot of them were in the 30 to $60 range. Um, so there you go with your shipping. Now to tune them up, let's go ahead and take the iron out. This has a hole in it so you can kind of torque these down without your thumbs you can get a better cut but when you get it you should take the iron out and I would run it over I ran this one over this diamond plate just to make sure the sole was good and flat okay it's good for your sole get mm -hmm. flat and then I actually lifted it and and slightly ease these edges so I had no sharp edges that would potentially dig in. So then you've got a beautiful flat surface to begin with. And then it's a good idea to put a little wax on there. Once you've got that honed and flat, you know, that's a similar process to prepping a regular hand plane. You wanna make sure the sole is flat, but here it's just a small surface, so it's quick and easy. Then you're gonna get it ready with the wax and now all we have to do is prep the iron. Now, if you notice, that iron is sitting in there at kind of a steep upright angle, almost like we use the card scraper. But this is different. This is not sharpened 
by honing it to 90 degrees and then pushing over the burr. It's honed to 45 degrees. And this is almost a 16th of an inch thick. So that other link we mentioned earlier to um, Lee Valley, that's actually, that was for replacement irons. So you might buy a used one um, and find that you don't have an iron or it's pitted out or you need another one. They're like two and three quarters wide. I, I got this one off of a different scraper that I had upstairs. That's what that hole is. They don't usually have a hole in them. So I kind of robbed it from this old hand scraper thing. Uh, and it's pretty nice steel, so it worked, it working, it's working nicely. But you're going to first create a 45 degree edge. And in, that's pretty much it. That's, after that, it's similar to the other method, because after that we're going to draw it out slightly on the flat side. And then we're going to push the burr, starting at the 45, and then bringing up our burnishing tool until we're about 15 degrees this way, off of 90 this way, okay? So instead of being perfectly like zero, we're gonna, it'll be about 15 degrees, but we're starting on the back side of the 45. That's where the burr will occur, on the flat. And then it's gonna lay toward the burr when it goes back in the cutting tool. So let's go through the quick process of creating this edge. Now, I started grinding this edge I'll just show you the method I used to get it honed. So you want to hone this pretty nicely and this is heavier and I, it, it'll hold up longer. It's like a sturdier tool. Um, but this is the book, a reprint, but it was first published in 1934. So when it refers to glue, all it refers to is hide glue in here. And then it talks about all different kinds of planes, but here it's talking about how to sharpen the number 80. And it was kind of good because I went through, and here's what I just told you about honing the edge, burnishing it, and bringing it up to the 15 degrees right here. And I'm gonna just demonstrate that to you. So you can use, again, a file to create this, but I like to go with the grinder. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just take you through those steps pretty quick. Here I've got I think this is a 60 grit stone, a Norton stone. You want to set your grinder plate angle to 45 degrees. So to do that, I usually just move the plate, my tool rest in, and I have these little pieces of oak that I keep over next to my uh, grinder that are, I did like a chop sawed them at different angles or cut them on the table saw, however I did to achieve these angles. So here I've got a 25 degree angle, you know, that would be pretty steep like this. Create It will create that kind of angle on the end of the cutter. Here I've got a 40, but here I want the 45. Now the way I use these is I just set them on there and I, I adjust the grinder plate until it's sitting, I can see kind of the radius sitting flat right on that bottom eighth of an inch, okay? Because that's, that's where my iron is going to make contact. So I want to get that right to my 45, all right? <laughs> so it, ha it just has to be close. It doesn't have to be exact, but I know it's pretty good. All right, and then I'm, to grind this, pretty simple. Just going to be gentle about it and nicely move straight across. Safety glasses are fogging up. <laughs> I may not take this all the way. I just want to go through the steps. I already did the other edge, so I'll use that to demonstrate the cutting. But anyway, I would go ahead with that until I saw a nice even cut. 
I check it for square and for straightness and just lightly finesse it until I had a nice ground edge at 45. Now I'm going to come back to the bench and here I can use my diamond plate again but I'm going to set this actually I could hold this but it's kind of tricky to hold it right at the 45. You can feel when it hits the flat but it's a pretty thin iron so it's hard to feel it and you could try to hone the whole thing but I found that it's actually pretty easy to get into the honing guide and I have a link to this too this is these are fairly inexpensive now I want to get that at the 45 degree angle so that was simple enough I just took a piece of wood and I at the chop saw I set the chop saw to 45 and there we go so it's 45 off of 90 so we could set that on a flat piece and just get it in my honing guide just adjust it until it's seated flat on my 45 degree angle and go ahead and snug up the the bolt there that looks pretty good now I'm gonna get my pliers make sure I've got that nice and snug before it slips and I again will go to the diamond plate Let's put a little on the stone. Well, it's going to make a little noise, sorry. So I'd go until a flat, boy, that looks pretty good actually right there. I didn't, I wasn't on the grinder quite long enough, but that's pretty sweet. Nice, perfect angle. Tom, do you, um, Mike's asking, do you have to be concerned about bluing the iron? Yeah, you don't want to blue it out because you'll ruin the temper there. Um, it's not like hugely tempered to begin with, but you know, you can use saw blades, like, uh, I mean like hand saw blades, you know, for this type of thing too. They work fine. It's sort of like a nice hard spring steel, but yeah, I was going very light on there. That blue stone grinds at a, um, a lower temperature than those old gray ones. And I did, when I ground my other one, I had a bucket of water that I just dipped in just to be sure that I wasn't taking it too hot. Anyway, once I've done that, I could flip to my other side and take it a little finer. And then you could even take it finer than that and Get it on your water stones because you're set up in the, the holding jig here. These are my water stones and I've already flattened them with my diamond plate, the lapping plate I used earlier, the 95 micron. It's amazing, this guy, for flattening those plates. It's uh, not inexpensive, but unbelievable. So. You could take this through the grits. Here's, this is a thousand. And then you'd lay it on the back and just take that little whisker of a burr off of there. Then we're gonna move it to the 3000. Same thing. Again, wow, you can see that. Can you see that polish coming up? Mm -hmm. It's sweet. And then you, Take it there. I mean, you could stop right here, but we got the 10,000 sitting right here in front of us. <laughs> so these are Ohishi stones that came from Lee Nielsen. Um, they do sell them on Amazon, and I found a combination stone that's 3,000 and 8,000. 8,000 is enough. If you want that special 10,000, it's pretty sweet. I have only found that directly from uh, Lee Nielsen. But that combination 3,000, 8,000 stone, we did put a link to that um, in the description of this video. So, all right. These are beautiful water stones. You know, they're a little more money than the, the very basic ones, which I had for years. So I'm telling you, I appreciated it when I got nice ones like this. All right, so I'm already honed enough there. I'm going to take this out and then I can then I can hit it 
Make sure I've got the back polished as well, keeping this nice and flat. And I've got a nice polish there. So I've got a great edge, and now I'm ready to push the bar. This would be nice to put into a metal working vise, but I don't have that here, so I always just make my own little vise here by putting one of my hand screw clamps into my regular bench vise. It gets it nice and up in the air here. Gives me that smaller angled jaw because I can't get that angle that I need in the bench vise. So I'll snug that up. This little spacer keeps it from racking, but it holds that nicely. So now, once I'm here, I want to draw it out. Now I didn't polish the back. It doesn't look that great. The other end I did. So I would have honed this flat until I had a similar polish here. And again, you're just gonna strop it, drawing out that edge before you push the burr over on that edge. So we're gonna put it in here. I'm actually gonna put my little magnet on there so I don't crush the other one that I already made that I wanna use. Let's do that right there. So here's where we're going to use this angle. Now in the book, they say this step here might take 20 or 30 kind of pushes because um, it's a harder steel and you're gently moving it up. Like you saw when I, when I pushed the burr over the regular uh, card scraper, it's like three or four and you're done. It seems like a softer metal. But here I'm going to start at the 45 and I'm just going to push at the 45 a couple times. Now I'm going to just slightly raise the handle and just keep going. Just keep slightly raising with each push and figure you're going to stop at around 20 or 30 strokes. So calibrate how much you want to move each time. It might be, you know, three quarters of a degree each time. So you want to get that right. Just kidding. So then I'm going to come up till I'm about 15 degrees. So if you want to know what 15 degrees is, it's that right there. Okay. So that's about the angle I want my burnisher to finish at from this 45 degree side. So it's right about there, right? I was getting close to it. I'm just going to stop right there. Okay. Now I feel a nice burnished edge. Now I can take it to my card scraper. I mean my number 80. Set my number 80 down and now I want the bevel away from the angled side. So it's going to be leaning like this and you want your burr here because that's the angle of the cut. It's pushing into the lean. So I'm going to bring it in from this end. Okay now you want to loosen up all the all those screws and let it just go all the way down and you're going to set this so that it's seated right on the MDF with the sole flat. So you want to have it just basically try to lock it in at perfect plane with the sole. So that's what I'm doing. I'm holding it using the MDF to keep all three aligned. I'm going to snug these up with it nice and flat. Now I'm going to use my little uh, Allen wrench as, like they call it in the thing, a Tommy bar. That's an old term, right? Maybe not. But I'm going to use it that way anyway. <laughs> Tom Lewis is curious if the 80 is used the same way as the 112 scraper plane. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure I've seen the 112. The 80 is, I believe, the most common. Whoops, I went the wrong way. I'll have to look at the 112. Okay, so now nothing's happening, but I can see that blade is very close. Now here's the fun part where you adjust it. It's really close. You're going to turn this screw, which is instead of your thumbs pushing the back of the blade, that's a hard blade to flex because it's a 16th inch thick. You're just going to turn this and it's going to spring the edge and when it pushes it forward it actually exposes that cutting edge more. So it's going to be dropping just below the sole and we should get 
a decent little shaving. So let's check it out. I'm gonna just back it off so nothing's happening. Okay, now I'm just gonna turn it a little. All right, I might have too much there, but let's just try it. I'm, I'm really feeling a lot there, so I'm gonna back it off just a touch. That's what I haven't figured out, why, how to get rid of that. Do you hear that? Yes. <laughs> but look at, now in the book it tells, it says the old hand who's used to using the handheld, the regular card scraper, when he takes this the first time, he makes the mistake of bearing down too much, too much pressure. You, have, you can be light about it. You don't need to give it a lot of force. Now this is where it's the rookie feeling. I'm gonna have to get acclimated to it. I wish I had a real old one because this, I'm wondering about the quality of this one. It feels like a later one. And I have seen guys use these that, it's amazing how, how well it works. But you're just gonna, you could use this on curly maple. It's wonderful. Um, in fact, I first saw these used at DR Dimes um, company um, where they were make, they were, this guy was card scraping a curly maple dining table top. And he was going over it, you know, really fast, like this. Like, just not, it's not that hard because you got the handles. It's, it's not the force required for hand holding the card scraper. You don't, your fingers don't get tired or anything. You're not behind it, your thumbs aren't gonna burn. And it's kind of a, look at every one is a nice shaving because I mean, look at that, that's pretty cool. And, I, and you can go right around, across. Now, if I gave it a stronger push, you ever see those uh, tabletops that have the real scalloped surfaces? Sometimes that's done with a scrub plane, but that can also be affected with a strongly set uh, card scraper like this, or number 80. So, very easy to create really nice heavy shavings with the number 80. Really excellent for like, I think tabletops especially is where I've seen it shine. Um, you know, larger panels. So when you're getting down to the detail stuff, you really wanna to go to the hand and finesse it in and get nice control with that there. This will eliminate a lot of issues on a tabletop like tear out or when you use it on curly maple, it actually accentuates the curl in some ways if you want that kind of a little more rustic colonial look because the card scraper at this steep angle kind of roughens up those fibers so they they just take the stain more strongly so you get more of the variation and pop in the uh, figure. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Remember, if you like this content, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. And any comments you have, we'd, I love hearing them. We look forward to seeing you next time right back here. Good night, everybody.